140. Um, when class starts, I usually try to be right here greeting our students. Um, I usually try to have their sketchbooks right here. So these are their sketchbooks. They're separated by bells, okay? And so I usually try to have the one whose bell it is sitting right here when they come in. That way they can just grab their sketchbook on their way to their seat. I also usually try to keep pencils here. Um, <clears throat> you can find them on the floor or wherever because a lot of times students forget pencils. Orange books are here in case you need them. I'm not sure yet if I'm leaving any assignments for these. Aprons are here. Students can always grab an apron. Um, <clears throat> if there's a fire drill, you need to take this outside. Um, and you hold it up depending on which side. You know, if you have all your kids, you hold up the green side. If you don't have all your kids, you hold up the red side. <clears throat> Here's our fire escape plan, bell schedule, lockdown procedures, anything that you need to know. Here's data that we're required to have up in my safe space, little poster, and all that. Okay, so here's um, all the sketchbooks again. Up here is the yellow workbooks, okay? So these are my intro classes, and they will use the yellow workbooks for certain assignments. Um, over here, this is where we keep the Bell 6 stuff that is in progress. So any projects that Bell 6 is working on um, <clears throat> can go in here. Also some stuff that I'm saving for the end of the school year for shows and things um, go in here. I usually don't let students take stuff home until the end of the school year. Down here I have some units for you. <clears throat> I'm going to load more units up, but this is the first crafts unit. I also plan to have some other supplies for units for you down here at the bottom, all organized, okay? So check that, there's important stuff in there. Um, bell five stuff, bell seven stuff, bell four stuff. These two cabinets don't really have anything that you will need. Um, and here's my first aid kit, right there. A lot of times you can keep a kid from having to go all the way down to the nurse if you just need a Band-Aid. I have some hand sanitizer in here. Uh, I'll try to put lotion in there too. Um, this is the paper cabinet, okay? So um, in here basically it's paper. So I'll, I'll have computer paper up here that you'll have to take to the copier when you go and all different types of other paper that you might need. Yarn cabinet, all kinds of yarn, which you'll need a lot for um, some of the crafts projects I'm leaving. Uh, you do have to be on the kids to put it up neatly because um, this little stuff like this gets tangled and gets out of hand really quick. So, um, there's a ton of yarn in here. If they can't find what they need, then they need to look harder. Craft materials cabinet. Um, I'll have the wire coat hangers here, which we'll need for a sculpture project. Um, wire tools, watercolors, hot glue guns right there. Um, felt scraps up here. Just different materials that would fall under the craft supply, um, you know, umbrella. Drawing materials are in here. This is drawing and printmaking material. So we've got like chalk pastels, um, chalk uh, dry erase boards if you want to use those for anything. Um, printmaking supplies. Tortillon blenders will come in handy for a lot of the drawing assignments. And just some office supply tools down here at the bottom. Okay, moving right along. Extra sketchbooks and portfolios and the yellow workbooks are up here. So students will lose their sketchbooks or sometimes they'll just fill up their sketchbooks. They can get another one, okay? And then portfolios are up there. Extra containers if you wanna get crazy and organize stuff, go for it. This is where I put stuff to hand back to the class. So after I've graded it, I put it here to hand it back. And um, so all this stuff needs to be handed back, obviously. I put my lesson plans and stuff here. I don't think you'll have to deal with that. Um, back here, I try to put stuff that kids should just be able to grab. So rulers, yarn needles, glue sticks, scrap paper, scissors, stuff like that. The kids need to just be able to grab quickly. Um, and here... Here's extra yellow workbooks that the intro class will need. Okay. So they're gonna do a lot of work in this in the intro class. So if they lose theirs, or if they say they can't find it, or if you get a new student, this is where they are. Um, brushes, paint. I don't, I'm, I don't think I'm leaving any painting assignments, but 
This is the paint. <clears throat> and the sinks, they clog really bad. So um, just try to make sure that the students aren't putting anything gross down there. And if you try to wipe them off as you go, they don't get so dirty. Also, the hot water gets hot super fast. So um, beware, because that will burn you the hot water. Uh, paper towels, I usually just stick on a plunger. <clears throat> And here's their portfolios. So they're organized by the bell and then their last name. So this is where they can put their projects that are either in progress or that you hand back. Paper cutter, students cannot use without teacher supervision. So really only you should be using the paper cutter. Um, <clears throat> here's some cardboard that I've cut. These are scraps for the cardboard relief sculptures um, in sculpture class. These I cut uniform to use for the backing for the yarn painting um, project. So they're all the same size and they're all square. So these are for the first crafts project, the yarn painting project. They can use those. Okay, and then here's some of my plants. These like to get watered once weekly. These like to get watered once weekly. These like to get watered once weekly. This likes to get sprayed as often as you want to spray her. This is Frida. My kids like to spray her too. So if you just want to spray <clears throat> as often and as much as you want to. Students like to spray her too. There are certain students that um, love to come back and spray her and I usually encourage that because um, she loves moisture. Um, this can be, you know, prog projects that are in progress can go here. Um, here's some more cardboard that can be broken down. I'm going to try to break this down before you come, but who knows when the baby's coming. Um, this is, they like to be watered once weekly, these plants. And this plant likes to get watered once every one or two weeks. Okay, and this is the turn in bins. So this is where the different bells will turn in their work. I hope that's in here for you to grade. And then this is the supply closet. And here's fabric scraps, which I'm gonna try to organize before you come. So hopefully this will not look like this. And the smart board. Um, which if you need any help using it, Mr. Fisher next door is really good at it, but power button and it mirrors your screen. Uh, and it, when, on, when you're on your screen, you just drag stuff to the right and it'll pop it up here. So you'll get used to using that. Um, Mr. Fisher can help you or Mr. Logan or ITRT person. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's helpful. Oh yeah, and sometimes I put supplies here that the kids are gonna need like for the day. So they can just come up and grab them you can like load up what they're doing like we just finished embroidery so there's embroidery hoops in here and you can switch this stuff out depending on what you want students to have quick access to and I don't think I'm leaving any clay projects for you but this is the clay room just in case I do leave clay projects or in case you are an avid clay person and you want to teach a clay project um, here you go 